Real quick before we get into this episode, guys, I am trying to get my social media game up just a little bit. So if you guys could do me a huge favor and go follow my Twitter and my Instagram, both at Dapper Darius, it'd be much appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get into the last episode of Demon Slayer Season 2 on Sundays. I'm sad. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Early Bird Darius, so I am still super tired. Back at it again with the finale of Demon Slayer Season 2. Now, I do know that this finale in particular is going to be 45 minutes long, that the length of two episodes. Real quick, I'm recording this after the episode because uh, I forgot to put it in the intro. I'm sure some of you guys are aware, but some of you guys are not. With the first and last episode of every season of every show we watch on the channel, the full length version, which is normally available exclusively on Patreon, is available for everyone. Click that link in the top of the description, get that free full length, come back here for the review, much appreciated, and check out that Patreon for keeping that in the future. Fantastic rewards. All right, back into the episode. Like the episode just dropped like a minute ago. It's 801 currently right now. And I do know season three or at least the next movie or the next arc, I should say, has already been announced. I saw a picture of it on Twitter. It looks fantastic. I'm not going to tell you who the Hashira are on the front because we all know there's a main Hashira or two that have to do with each big arc nowadays. But I'm very excited and super eager to find out what happens in this finale because that explosion made me very nervous and the way last episode ended was beautiful but also nerve wracking. So I gotta find out what happened. Let's hop into this, Demon Slayer season two, the finale. I believe this is episode 18. Yup, it is episode 18, and this one is called No Matter How Many Lives. I do not like the title of that. Let's do this. Cause look, I rewatched it like a hundred times with my friend Garrett. That explosion was right on. It was on both, you can even see Zenitsu in it. Ugh. Even Nezuko, <gasps> blood demon art exploding blood? What is sh oh my lord, bye bye blood sickles. That shows you the power of Nezuko's blood demon art as well. Okay, intro. <laughs> okay, opening. The poison is just ravaging his body as well. He said it doesn't work on him because of his wilderness background, but. She can use the exploding blood, but in a way which it doesn't harm the inhabitant. What? Talk about precision and um, amazingness. So he survived at least the explosion. Like I was afraid his body would be like in half, but he's still gushing blood. Poison is ravaging his body. Antidote's not working. He lost a hand. <laughs> I know. Imagine. Oh no. Tell me why we just saw Nezuko deal with Hinosuke with the poison and I already forgot she just did that and she can save Tengen with it. Oh my god. Oh my god. This man. Please tell me Tengen's gonna survive and get to retire with a happy life with his wives. With how many times we carry Nezuko on our back? It's about damn time. I'm just joking. I'm just joking, but... Absorbing the blood upper moon. It's been so long since I've seen Tamayo. Let's go see her give her upper moon actual blood. <gasps> Speaking of Tamayo and the blood, we are the cat just appears out of nowhere. Oh my god, please let me see her again next season. I miss her. That is a cute ass cat. God damn. That sounds like Gyotaro and Daki screaming. Are they disintegrating while they're talking or are they bickering siblings till the very very end it is somewhat sad to think this is the this is the final fight they will ever have though that's kind of a mean thing to say especially because we know he's insecure about his looks you know Those are some deep cuts from both of them. Especially because they already had somewhat of a brother connection, knowing they were trying to protect their sisters. He knows he's just upset and doesn't really mean this. Mm, and she's gone. This is about the time we get their demon backstory. Oh, 
this is how all demons go, bro. They always have horrible backstories, and I always feel bad, but then I, I realize what, you know. Yes, <laughs> trust me. I'm kind of like Tanjiro. I'll always sympathize and empathize with their story and their situation and why they chose to do the things they do. But I, I, I love actually the way he said it in season one uh, around episode 19 when Giyu was like confronting him about this. Um, he says, don't worry. I'll never hesitate when it comes to saving lives to put my, my sword to a demon's neck. I will chop a demon's head off without hesitation, but it doesn't mean I cannot sympathize and empathize with them. And as you, like, and I put myself in Gutaro's shoes right here, if I'm living the goddamn horrible childhood he is, and Muzan comes and offers me to be a demon, and I can just, you know, like, are you guys gonna say no? If you're lying, if you're, if you're lying if you say no. In this situation, come on. Like, look at them just throw rocks at this poor, helpless kid. Okay, he comes home one day. She's 13. She just turned. What the? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm turning into a demon 1 million percent after that. If I see Muzan come out of nowhere, it's a wrap. Oh my god, he got chopped right down the back by the same samurai who she blinded. After I finish him off. Oh, he- Oh! Okay? That was a clean scythe to the face. And he's like, wait, what happened? I thought he was just in the hole. Oh, again, another clean one to the face. As he carries his murdered, burnt sister's corpse down the street. Let's say they weren't demons and just died here. Like in the street, in the snow. This would be a horrible backstory. This is not Muzan, but he is munching on this person we just killed. Upper six. It's not Muzan, but it's another upper six. And he can give blood. Just like Muzan? Okay. So he'll give you the blood, but he still has to do the selection process. I thought Muzan did all the recruitment. Well, I guess Akaza was trying to recruit Rengoku. A 12 Kizuki like me. Oh, they rose. They barely did it, but they rose. Like I said, knowing his story, I can't blame him for that. Now they can actually reflect. If he did have one regret, it would be... I understand that. From a big brother having to drag your sister into this life? I don't... Yeah. But because of the very unfortunate situation she happened to be born into, she had no control over. He's doing this... For her own good, he feels. Because he knows the longer he stays together, the longer he forces her into what seems to be a never-ending horrible scenario, you know? He feels like she can literally live a better life without him. And I like how he's in the darkness right now, and she is literally in the light. Heading into the darkness. In terms of visual storytelling, <laughs> you can't get better than this. And how quickly she's willing to jump in the darkness for her brother, you know? Now that's the true sign of siblings right there. Like, would Nezuko hesitate to jump in the darkness for Tanjiro? This is very touching, I won't lie. I know I've already said the voice actor for Yugutaro is really, really good. But the voice actor for Daki, even though she cries a little too much, Ume, we should say, is very, very good as well. Look at that. Even when <laughs> before they had demon powers, they were still the ultimate tag team. 
as they walk into the eternal flames of hell and darkness together. That's what true siblings are. Don't get me wrong. I'm over the moon that we killed them. I'm so happy. But that was really well done in terms of that backstory and that sibling. Like, I love the symbolism between Nezuko and Tanjiro and Daki or Ume and Gutaro. Oh, I'm just ecstatic that none of us have to die. The snake Hashira? Yes, it would. Still, don't try to roast us. Come on, you defeated an upper rank. Come on, give us some props. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot he lost his eye as well. This man is straight Kakashi out here. I think he's going to retire, right? I would... Let's go. Now there's going to be two vacant, Ringo, uh, ran, two vacant Hashira spots. He's definitely seen Tanjiro. The young guy you hate has the potential to reach Rengoku's level, said by Hashira himself. They're at least going to get ranked up a couple for this fight. Is this the master? Seeing him now with his injury? Kagaya, did we ever know his name before? A hundred years and number six had never been defeated, but now it finally has. I wonder what his injury is. Fate? Oh, I firmly agree. I sure hope so. I would love for you to live to be able to see that. The sole blemish on my family? See? And now I'm curious about his injury as well. Knowing about Gutaru's poison and what, you know, is that a natural disease? Is that a demon-created disease? Could Nezuko fix that? Oh, we're back in that parallel world from the first season. Where Muzan called the Lower Six meeting. Infinity Castle, that's what it's called? That's a dope-ass name. Are they playing a remix of the opening right now? Come on. You have our main squad having a big group hero hug. Trust me, they need it. <laughs> Inosuke is barely breathing, holding on to life. Nezuko is like... While playing the opening too? Come on. I'm not going to lie, going into this arc, I was a little nervous. Thinking, that's already over? That was so fast, I felt like a normal episode. Real quick, as I said, I was nervous going into the season, thinking it wouldn't hold up to season 1 standards. Um, but should I say that blew my expectations beyond out of the water. Beyond. Demon Slayer cemented itself as one of the goats. It really has. In terms of shonen, animation, UFO table, unlimited budget works, come on. Come on. We'll talk about a wrap up. Talk about an ending to an arc. Talk about an arc in general. This arc, like I said just a second ago, blew my expectations beyond out of the water. When it came to the fight, when it came to the, the pacing, when it came to the animation, the score, the, the seeing new powers, every the power ups. Oh my, going beyond plus ultra, like, it's just absolutely crazy. Tengen, I'm beyond happy that he is alive and is able to retire with his wife. Trust me. Now, I was hoping this ending would set up the next arc a little bit more, but... I at least have saw, seen on Twitter. If you guys don't want to know who the next two Hashira and the next are, I obviously skip forward like 10 seconds, but the next two Hashira are going to be the Mist Hashira and the Love Hashira, and the next one, and the Mist Hashira is the most I'm excited to see, especially because that info we got this season that he went from being a non-swordsman to a, a Hashira in two months is beyond crazy, especially it's already taking Tanjiro years at this point, and he is nowhere near that level. But I do very much enjoy the fact that Tengen said... To, I forget, I don't know his name, the snake Hashira, but he said, you know, I'm retiring. There are definitely youngsters who have the potential, at least one that I can think of off the top of my head, that has the potential to fill in these vacancies in the Hashira, which there's the sound vacancy. I don't know if they have to be the exact, obviously, replication of the Hashira before them, but I know there's always, what, a fire and a water one, no matter what, throughout the Hashira, so I wonder who's going to be the fire to replace um, Rengoku, if I had to guess the one i'm talking about my boy tanjiro come on and if i had to guess who the hashira that would replace uh, tengen is honestly i think it would probably be a new character i don't think zenitsu and inosuke are at that level yet and i don't think they're going to leave a vacancy for long especially with what the master was saying how this is a 
turn and this is like a, a change of tide this is a turning point if this was mushoku tensei because for over a hundred years an upper six has not died and we finally killed one tang with the help of tengen inosuke nezuko the three wives zenitsu and tanjiro we were actually able to kill daki and gutaro their backstory horribly tragic i love the the line in terms of family is family and like you may have differencing like there are there, there are situations in which if you know like it'd be, probably be better off for you to separate like what guitar was trying to do at the end there you know have her live a better life and and him continue with him no matter what he, like he said no matter how many times he's reborn he's always going to hurt people and be Gutaro the the thief and collector so he wants to separate that life from Daki Ume but Ume relies on him too much you know she like he's everything to her so that would be the worst thing in her world if he left and so they with each other are able to battle anything they literally do make each other stronger and I love how you know, whether that be Hashira or Demon Slayer, whether that be cold and starvation, you know, just having that person that got your back is always great, but horrible, tragic backstory from them. I love the way they animated them, like drifting off and like part of, like turning into particles in the sky. Beautiful, beautiful. We only had 11 episodes in this arc, the Entertainment District arc, but oh my God, was it amazing. It was amazing. From episode six to episode eleven, it was just nonstop. It was like a, it was like old school. It was like the pacing was insane. Yet we had a six episode fight. Does that not feel like old anime to you? I'm telling you, Demon Slayer killed the game. They definitely put themselves at the top of the map on season one. But they literally tink tink tink. They cemented that shit, nail and hammer with this season, a hundred percent. If anyone had questions about whether Demon Slayer would perform would flop would do this that and the other they've all been settled into the season 100 if you guys enjoyed please leave a like let me know your thoughts down below and let me know if you guys are hyped to see this next season this next arc with me because you guys know i'll be there don't forget to subscribe click that bell so you guys always know when i post check out that patreon for full length don't forget to drink some water be safe tell someone you love them depper squad have a great day peace